Hi everyone, welcome back to Nuskit. So let's solve today's daily lead code challenge, which is find the duplicate number. So let's try to read the problem statement first. So we are given an array of integer nums containing n plus one integers, where each integer is in the range of one to n inclusive, right? So there is only one repeated number in nums written this repeated number. So say for example, we are given a nums array, right? And let's say the size of this array is five. So the only element which can be there in this array will be from one to four only, right? So there will be one element which will be repeated. We need to figure out what's that element. So say for example, in the first example, the size of the array is five. So we can see that only the numbers are there from one to four, and there is one element which is repeated. Hence the answer is two, right? In the second example, again we can see the size of the array is five. Once again we have only elements from one to four inclusive, and there is one element which is repeated. So the answer is three. In the last array. We can see that there are five elements once again, and all the elements are from one to four only inclusive, and there is only one element which is actually repeating. So the answer is three, right? So I hope you have understood the problem statement. So let's see how we can actually solve it. So here I have taken an example. So this is the example that I have uh, picked from the Lead Code official editorial, right? So let's look at that. So the first approach which can which we can actually solve it using sort, right? So we can sort this array, and now you can simply run a loop and figure out like if two elements. At the same time are equal, then that would be the our answer. So, so these are unequal, 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 and then unequal, and then they are equal. So we can simply return it because the similar elements will be uh, will be coming together, right? When we sort this array, but definitely we cannot actually make changes in the original array itself, right? So this is why we cannot use this approach, right? So this is a very very naive solution, right? So the time complexity for this will be n log n. Let's talk about the second solution. So now we can actually use second solution as hashing technique, right? The idea is that we will be taking extra space, right? So what we can do is, okay, two is having frequency one, five is having frequency one, nine is having frequency one as of now, six is having frequency one as of now, nine, now nine comes again, so it's it's and it's already there in my hash map, right? So I will basically return it, right? So there is no need like only hash map we will be taking, we can take set as well, right? So any time if we encounter any element which is already there in my set, I can say that this is the repeated element, right? And because question have made sure that we have only Uh, one element which is actually repeating, right? So therefore, the time complexity for this particular test, like for this particular approach, will be big of n. The space will also be big of n, right? Because in the worst case scenario, we might end up storing all the elements in the set, and therefore, it will take big of n space. So I hope you have understood the second approach as well. Now let's talk about maybe the third approach, right? We can maybe solve it with more approaches as well. But uh, now I'm simply jumping onto the uh, like best solution of this, right? Uh, because i was uh, looking at the lead code editorial as well there were multiple solutions given right but i'm simply jumping onto the like the optimized one right so let's look at that so the third solution which is the optimized is basically fast and slow pointer right so the idea over here is that you can see that if i start with nums of 2 right so at nums of 2 like if i take this two element so what i'll do i'll simply go to this nums of 2 and look at this number which is 9 so 2 is now i will say okay 2 is now pointing to 9 Now, once I reach nine, now I will seem directly jump onto the ninth index of this array, and I will say, okay, what is stored at nine? So it is stored like it is having one as a stored element. Now I am at one. Now I will once again take this as an index and will go at this index, and I will pick this element. So now one is pointing to five. So it's kind of like I am I am basically making pointers to these elements. So I will start with two, will go to two index, and will pick the element. So what I am actually doing is basically I am doing something like this. So initially. Let's say I I'll take one pointer. Let's say PTR, and this PTR is nothing but the zeroth element, right? Nums of zero. And now what I'm doing is basically I'm saying okay, nums of PTR, right? So you can see that nums of zero is two. Now what I'm doing is nums of two. I'm going at nums of two. So nums of two is nothing but nine, right? So basically what I'm doing is I'm doing something like this: nums of pointer, which is the first element. Like uh, you can say that nums of zero initially, which is two, which is this two. This two is basically pointing to what nums of this nums of zero, because pointer is nums of zero, right? So I need to make this particular arrangement, right? So let me just uh, show it to you how this will look like. So if I complete this setup, then the like the, the overall arrangement will look like this. So initially I'm starting with two, so I'll go to two index, and this will start pointing to nine. Then I will go to nine index, nine will start pointing to one. Then from one I will go as uh, to the one one index, and then. From one, we can see that five is there, so five is there. Now I will go to index five. From five, I can see okay, three is there, so five is pointing to three. Now I'll go to index three. So at three, six is stored, so three will start pointing to six. Now I will go to index six, six. At six, I can see that the, okay, there is eight present, so I will start pointing to eight. Then eight 
if I go to index eight, so you can see that eight at eight, we have seven as stored element. Then once again, if I go to seven index and I see that seven is pointing to nine. So you can see that initially when you started with this two and you went to this index number two. So you saw that, okay, two, this two was eventually pointing to this nine, right? This two was eventually pointing to this nine. This nine is eventually pointing, was it pointing to one? Then this one was pointing to five, then five was pointing to three, then three. And eventually what happened This seven is also pointing to nine, which means that, okay, we have some cycle in this particular uh, example, right? So if in any case, if your array is having duplicate element, like there will be definitely a cycle in that particular array. This is the uh, core concept in this particular question, right? And once we have this array, so I don't know if you guys have solved that particular question or not find the starting point of the linked list. If not, I would highly recommend that you go and watch my video of linked list cycle in present in the linked list playlist. I have shown there how to prove that particular algorithm as well, right? So the idea is now very simple that I will be taking two pointers like slow, right? And fast. And initially both will be pointing to nums of zero, right? Initially, this will also be pointing to nums of zero and fast will also be pointing to nums of zero, right? The, which means that, okay, my slow, and my fast initially both will be at this point. Now what I'll do, I'll simply say that my slow will be equal to, my slow will be moving by one time. So I can say nums of slow, right? Because you can see that slow is initially two. So ideally now my slow should move, just think about it. Ideally, you can see that your slow is now two, right? Slow, the value of slow is actually two, which is nums of zero, which is two. So in the next step, you need to move to nine. How can you move to nine? If you ca again calculate nums of slow, right? Because slow is basically two, which is the first value of the array, right? Which is the first value of array. You can say it as nums of zero. You can see that slow value is nums of zero. So again, you need to calculate nums of slow once again, and this will be, this will become slow. So ideally what you are saying is that, okay, two will start pointing to nine, right? You are saying that, okay, slow was first over here then slow ideally now this will directly jump over here. So this will become my slow because I need to iterate over this, over this particular thing, right? Great. And similarly, how fast will be moving? So I have just shown it, shown to you that, okay, slow will be moving like this and how fast will be moving? Let's look at that as well. So my fast will be updated something like this, nums of, nums of fast, right? What does it mean? You can see that. So initially, what is fast? So for fast is basically nums of zero, right? which means this fast is nums of zero initially. Okay. Now if I calculate nums of fast, so nums of fast will be nine. Obviously nums of fast will be nine, but ideally your fast should move over here, right? So how can you reach over here? So if you calculate nums of, right? Nums of, nums of fast. Um, what is fast? Fast is basically two, right? So now what is nums of two? Now nums of two is basically nine, right? So again, you are cal calculating nums of nine and what is nums of nine? Num nums of nine is actually one, right? So eventually if you write this like this, nums of nums of fast. So it, this fast will eventually move two two times ahead, right? I hope you have understood this, how my uh, slow and fast are moving, right? Okay, so what I'll do now, so slow will start with nums of zero, fast will also will start with nums of zero. Every time I will make my slow pointer move by one time and my fast pointer by two times, right? And eventually what, what will happen? Let's try to look at that. So initially what will happen? Let me just remove this as well. So my slow is over here and fast is over here. Let's move this slow by one time. Let's move this fast by one time, sorry, two time. Then let's once again, so think about this. First slow is moving, then fast is moving in one iteration, right? So now in one iteration, let's move, let's make both of them move. Right. So let's make slow also move. Right. And then fast also move. So are they equal? Sorry, fast will come over here two times. Right. So are they equal? No. Once again, let's make slow move by one pointer and fast move by two pointers. Are they equal? No. Once again, let's make slow move by one pointer and then fast move by two pointers. Are they equal? No. So now once again, let's make slow by one pointer and then fast by two pointer. Are they equal? No. Let's make slow by one pointer and then fast by two pointer. Are they equal? No. Now, once again, let's make soul. Uh, sorry, let's make slow move by one pointer and then fast make move by two pointer. And when you move actually two pointers, now you can see that both of them are equal. If they're meeting in a cycle, right? That means duplicate is there. And because duplicate is there, that is why the cycle is there, right? 
So when these two elements will be meeting each other, which means that, okay, there is definitely a duplicate in this particular array. Now we need to find the duplicate element, right? So I, I, I'm once again recommending you guys that, okay, you go and watch my link list cycle too. Like how to calculate the start pointer of the link list cycle, right? Uh, there I have shown you the mathematics of that. I will attach the link in the video description also. Please go and look at that as well, right? Okay, now what, what we'll do, once these pointers meet at one point in time, I will make my slow pointer move to the very first value once again, which is nums of zero, right? And from there onwards, what I'll do, I'll make both of the pointers move like one time, right? And eventually this will move by one time. This first will also move by one time. And as soon as they meet once again, so it is for 100% sure that they will be meeting at the starting point. And the starting point will always be the duplicated element, right? The starting point will always be the duplicated element. It is like kind of an intuitive solution at the first in time, like at the, at the first time, if you will look at this solution, so it will feel that, okay, this is kind of unintuitive, but if you will try to take pen and paper and you will try to do it by yourself, you will definitely get the intuition behind this, right? The cycle is becoming because there are duplicate elements, right? So eventually what will happen if two was pointing to nine, there will be some other index also where nine will be placed, right? That is why this will become the start point of the loop, right? Then this problem will simply be broken down to the find the start of the link list, right? And you can actually uh, see the uh, like proof of that uh, in the link description, which is att attached in the description, right? Okay, now let's code this. So what will happen is now uh, I'll be taking two pointers basically. So my slow will also be pointing to norms of zero. My fast will also be pointing to norms of zero. And now what will happen is I'll basically run a loop while true, you can say while true, make slow nums of basically slow, right? And then fast will be nothing but nums of nums of fast, right? And at any point in time after move, move, like once we move them, if slow becomes equal to fast, we will break this loop. We will break this loop and we will come out of, uh, come out of this loop. And now what will happen? Once again, uh, as soon as they meet each other, which means that, okay, there is a loop right? There is a loop. Now what will happen? Once again, I will make my slow pointer point to the very first element. And then once again, I will run a loop like once while slow is not equals to fast, make both of them move by one time, right? So nums of slow and fast will become nums of fast. And then finally, I will basically return slow or you can return fast as well. Both like both ways fine. Uh, so let's return slow and now see whether it's getting submitted or not. So it's accepted and let's try to submit this and it got submitted, right? Great. So uh, the time complexity in this case is still big of n, but the space is basically big of one, right? So you can look, you can basically have a look on the proof of this, like how this is actually working, right? I have given proper mathematical proof for that. You can see the video which is attached in the description, right? So this is it from my side for this video and I'll see you in the next video till then. Bye-bye.